So we had started uh, looking into the process of infiltration. As I was mentioning that the process of infiltration is important from the point of view of uh, knowing when you irrigate the area, how much of the water which you are using for irrigation goes into the soil and how much of it will flow over the soil surface. The rate at which the water will infiltrate into the soil is known as the infiltration rate. And to find out the infiltration rate, you use various methods. There are uh, various equipment also which can be used for finding out the infiltration rate. What you do is you observe the depth of water which has been lost in a period time. That will give you the infiltration rate. Now what is important to understand is that what is what are the various factors which influence this infiltration rate? If you look in nature, the soil when it's dry, it will have uh, the moisture tension at a very high level. It will be able to attract the moisture with a lot of uh, force. Because when you look at the, the moisture availability in soil, the moisture is trapped in the soil pores in the form of um, the water under tension. Okay. Now this surface tension is because of Two things. One is the tension between the soil particles and water, which is which is the force of adhesion. Okay. And then there is another force which is working, which is the tension between the the water particles, the water molecules, that is known as the cohesion. So these adhesive and cohesive forces, they are responsible for the moisture availability in the soil. And because of these forces, the moisture tension keeps on varying depending on what is the level of moisture availability in the soil. So if we look at the various factors, the major factors which influence the infiltration rate. The soil texture is one, then the soil moisture content and the soil structure. These are the three major factors which influence the, the infiltration rate. For example, in the case of uh, soil texture, if the soil is coarse soil, the the pore spaces will be large enough. They will let the water move in the downward direction at a rate which is much higher in comparison to 
those soils which are fine soils. In the case of fine soils, your pore spaces will be, will be much smaller and they will be creating hindrance to the movement of the moisture. So the infiltration rate will depend largely on the, the type of soil which you are using uh, to know the infiltration rate. Similar to the soil moisture content, as we have uh, just seen that the moisture availability in the soil is dependent on the adhesion and the cohesion forces. When the moisture content increases, these forces, the moisture tension also reduces. So when the soil is at a higher moisture tension, it will have the capability of attracting more, more water into it and that will in turn increase the infiltration rate. On the other hand, when the moisture tension is much less or you can say when the moisture content of the soil is higher then the, the infiltration rate will be lower. And the soil structure also influences the, the infiltration rate. Because if the soil is granular soil is uh, uh, is structured in a granular fashion, the infiltration rate will be higher. On the contrary, if the structure of the soil is massive, the infiltration rate will be influenced, it will reduce. Okay. But later on we will again come back to these aspects when we deal with the infiltration process in detail. Right now at this stage, I would like you to have a basic, a basic understanding of uh, the influence of these individual factors which influence the soil and water relationships. It's also important to look at uh, the various conditions of soil moisture. And when we talk of the soil moisture condition, the first thing which we, which we must know about is the soil moisture content. There is one term which we must have the clearest understanding about. What do we mean by soil moisture content? Soil moisture content is nothing but is the level of availability of the moisture in the soil with respect to either the depth. It can be expressed in various manners. You can express in terms of uh, the depth of moisture per unit depth of soil or you can express in the form of uh, percentage uh, by volume. How much of uh, percentage of uh, soil volume is occupied by the, the water? Now this is the one depiction where if we assume that there is a block of dry soil and you add its depth is one meter, its area is also one square meter and if you add a depth of water of 150 millimeters that water will penetrate into the soil and it will increase its moisture content. 
Okay. Now, while presenting this uh, moisture content, either you can say that is 150 millimeters per meter depth of soil, or if you want to express this in terms of the, the volume, you will have to find out how much is the volume of uh, soil, if it is 150 millimeters, this much uh, is the amount of water into 1 meter to 1 meter, the amount of water is 0.15 cubic meters and 1 cubic meter of soil, that is what it, it, it amounts to. So, in terms of uh, percentage, it will be 15 percent. Now, this much depth is equivalent to 15 percent moisture content by volume. Because most of the time, when you will talk in terms of uh, the moisture availability, and that is what we are interested in, when we talk of irrigation, we must know that where the irrigation water is going, is it going and getting stored into the soil, or is it going as a loss? Is anything which is not being used by the plants as a loss? So our total aim is to to ensure that whatsoever water is being supplied through irrigation, it must be stored effectively into the soil. By effectively, we, we mean that it must be later on consumed by the crop. Okay. Now, the soil moisture content can be Uh, evaluated at any time and it's quite a useful thing to to define some of the properties of the soil in terms of the soil moisture content. So in uh, literature you will find that there are some soil moisture conditions which have been characterized, which have been defined in terms of the soil moisture content, which signify the various levels of uh, the, the soil moisture availability and those definitions we will look at. They, 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 those definitions are very important in terms of uh, the usability of water in terms of the availability of that water which has been stored subsequently by the crop. And these, these conditions are the condition of saturation, field capacity and the permanent wilting point. They are also known as the soil moisture equilibrium, equilibrium points. They will also be termed as soil moisture equilibrium points in literature. Let us try to look at these conditions or these levels one by one. What is the saturation level? The saturation level of the soil is that level when all the pore spaces are filled up with water. So if you if you supply a lot of water to the soil, 
either it can be in the form of natural rainfall or it can be in the form of artificial irrigation. So at the end of that moisture supply, you will find that the soil can come up to the saturation level. Just a, a sort of depiction here. Sorry, this is for uh, the field capacity. Uh, in the case of saturation, if I take the help of this, this slide, uh, this was the soil structure. That is the level of saturation. Now this level of saturation cannot stay for long unless you assume that you keep on supplying the moisture or the rainfall continues for a very long period or there is a depth of water which has formulated on the top of the ground and uh, the moisture availability is continuous. Otherwise the moment the moisture supply is stopped you will find that all the excess water which can be drained out by the force of gravity that will be drained out of the soil and the moisture content of the soil will reduce. Okay. At that stage when all the moisture, the excess moisture which can be drained out of the soil under the force of gravity, it has been drained out, that level is known as or that moisture content is known as the field capacity level. So in this depiction, this is what has been shown that you have, if this is the total soil column and in this soil column you have at the saturation level the total column was filled with water. When you have let the water uh, get drained under the force of gravity, then all that water has gone down and maybe it has joined the, the groundwater table, it has gone down the this particular level of the profile or the column of soil. Once it has come out of this, the level which is attained after that prolonged drainage and that uh, the time required for such drainage will vary from soil to soil. In the, the coarse soils, the time requirement will be much less, the draining will be quite fast, but in the fine soils in comparison, it will require a longer period to let the water drain out at the, uh, from the soil due to the gravitational forces, but it might vary from 24 hours to 72 hours. That can be the order of magnitude. Once that has happened, the level or the moisture content which is prevailing at that time, that is what is known as the field capacity level. Okay. Then the permanent wilting point, which is the third important soil moisture condition, is that level which when attained would not allow any further consumption of the soil moisture by the crop. 
So if you have a if you have a crop, the crop is consuming water from the soil through the evapotranspiration. We'll try to discuss that later. What what do we mean by evapotranspiration? But evapotranspiration is a combination of evaporation and transpiration, which is the consum consumption of the moisture by the plants plus the evaporation activity which is taking place. And that consumption can be only allowed up to a level which is known as the permanent wilting point. So if the moisture content reaches that level of permanent wilting point, then the crop will wilt. There will be a permanent damage to the crop in terms of its yield and it cannot revive. Even if you supply water at that level, it won't be able to revive. So in other words, you can uh, see that this is the, the lowest level up to which the crop might be in a position to use water, but this is not the level of uh, moisture up to which you can afford to go. Though at even that stage, if you look at this picture, uh, this was the total moisture at the the level of saturation up to this level, it drained out and the remaining was the field capacity level, the content at the field capacity level and the crop could only utilize the water between this level and up to this level. But by reaching here at this level, which is the permanent wilting point, the crop has damaged it's, uh, itself and the yield is affected, you might not get anything out of the crop. Though there is still some water left in the soil, that water is the water which cannot be used by the crops. There is still some moisture available in the soil which is there but it cannot be used by the crops. So, from uh, the angle of knowing what is the level of moisture availability in the soil, these moisture conditions are very essential, they are very useful and uh, we will discuss the, the various aspects related to these moisture conditions in the next class.